Is our inflation being caused by gasoline prices and used car prices? I'm Dr. Bill Connerly. I connect the dots between the economy and business. Business leaders today, along with consumers, are wondering about the nature of this inflation, how long it will last, what caused it, and what it means for a wide variety of different products. And I want to discuss the commentary I've heard that, gee, it's gasoline and used car prices that are really causing this inflation. The arithmetic on that assertion is right, but the implication is very, very misleading. I'm recording this in mid-March 2022, and this is the most recent data from the Consumer Price Index. Overall, you can see on the left side, CPI increased 7.9%, with especially large increases for gasoline and used cars. Without those increases, we would have had only 5.6% inflation, two percentage points less. It maybe sounds as if those two products were causing our inflation, but that is not the case. In order to explore this and to get better insights on the timing of price hikes for different products, we need to revisit supply and demand, the key uh, element in every economist's toolbox. Now, if you studied economics in school, this will be a uh, trip down memory lane. If you did not, don't worry because I'm going to talk you through everything. The fundamental building blocks are the supply and demand curve. Supply in that blue line uh, goes up to the right, it goes up when prices are high because greedy businesses will find a way to produce more when prices are high. And demand goes down, um, slopes down to the right, meaning a higher quantity demanded at cheap prices. We consumers are greedy as well and we want to take advantage of low prices. There is some price at which demand equals supply, and so everything seems pretty good in order to look at what happens when there's stimulus. And let me emphasize at this point, we've had a lot of stimulus. We've had fiscal policy, government spending in huge quantity, and the Keynesian model says there's a multiplier effect. We've also had monetary stimulus in the sense that the Federal Reserve has virtually printed money in a huge magnitude. So all of this stimulus has increased incomes and what happens? There's an increase in demand. And we see that when we add a, a, a shift the demand curve to the right and you find the new intersection of the new demand curve with the old supply curve and that's at a higher price. So that's our basic fact of uh, supply and demand. But changes take time and some products, the demand does not go up very quickly. So if you got some extra money and you said, oh, it's time to replace the roof, you might call a building contractor uh, for a new roof that's going to take a while. Or maybe because of the stimulus, you got a job and now you and your honey are going to get married. Congratulations to you. You're going to try to find a wedding venue. You may have to book 18 months out. So for these products, we see incomes only cause a small increase in demand in the short run. In the short run. In the long run, every pro every De demand for almost everything is going to go up. But in the short run, some things will be not in very rapid demand. Uh, at the same time, though, we will see that um, supply is fairly flat in some areas. When we say flat, we mean it doesn't take much of a price increase to get companies to produce more of their product. Netflix. Uh, Netflix is happy to stream a lot without a price increase. There are many goods where companies can produce a lot more very, very quickly. But there are also products for which uh, it's hard to get supply going very quickly. So eventually we can have more of any product that we want, but in the short run, that may not be the case. Uh, and oil, 
Oil, of course, the, the main uh, component in gasoline. Uh, oil takes a long time. If you're an oil person and you think, oh, prices are high, let's make more oil, you uh, call your geologist and you say, look at some old maps. And when they find some likely places where oil is or might be, then you try to secure the mineral rights. Then you hire a drilling rig and you do some exploratory wells. You'll get some dry holes probably. The oil people are keeping their fingers crossed. And eventually they find a deposit of oil, but that first well is not much of a producer typically. So a series of wells, produ production wells they're called, are drilled and then they're connected using pipes to a refinery and maybe we need a new refinery. So the upshot there is for some products, it takes a long time. In the case of oil, in an easy neighborhood, the Persian Gulf is fairly easy to work in. You know, three years is a common time, but in some harsh environments, uh, Alaska's North Slope or Siberia, 10 years would be a good job. So it's going to be years to produce some products. Now let's combine these concepts of what about products where demand increases very quickly, but supply increases very slowly, like that oil I was talking about. You get a very, very steep price increase simply because demand changes a lot faster than supply. But for some other products, you may see that uh, demand did not go up very much and supply was not very, did not need a big price increase. I'm thinking disposable diapers. So people get stimulus checks. Uh, are they gonna change the diaper more often? Maybe a little bit. Actually, the data show they uh, more often go to uh, the premium uh, brand of diapers rather than using more. But uh, demand does not increase very much and the industry has been producing diapers and our birth rate is down so they've got the capacity to produce a lot of diapers and so for those products we do not ver get very much of a price increase. So there are a couple of lessons here. Uh, the first is that our inflation is not being caused by gasoline and used cars. They're just like a crocus. It's a sign that inflation is coming, a sign that spring is coming. The second lesson, and this is aimed at business leaders, is that supply and demand, that basic tool is very, very important. But the change in demand, the change in supply can happen at different timings for different products and an awareness of how fast demand can change, how fast supply can change is critical to understanding any particular market. I'm Dr. Bill Connerly. I connect the dots between the economy and business. I put out a newsletter every month. I'd love to email it to you. If you'd like to get it, simply text, text the word econ to 42828. And thanks for watching.